Hello people of YouTube, it's Deepak here, and welcome to DCS World 2.9.9 and Aerogist Simulations Mirage F1 EE module. Welcome to tutorial 8, Guns and Rockets, Air to Ground. Today I'm going to demonstrate the use of the 30mm DEFA cannons, two of which were installed underneath the nose in this aircraft, and the rocket pods, the SNEB rocket pods, which can be uh, fitted on both uh, inner and outer wing stations. And you have two versions of the pods, the F1, which uh, carry 32 rockets, and the F4, which carry 18 rockets. Both pods carry the exact same types of rockets, the 68mm SNEB rockets, which come in a variety of flavours. Today we're using high explosive. And the only other difference is that the F1 pod uh, by default, you can actually change it in the mission editor, will launch six rockets uh, per pull of the trigger in CPC mode, and the F4 will actually launch singles. Uh, of course, if you put these pods into salvo, they'll fire for as long as you hold down the rocket trigger, so just be aware of that. Let's jump into the cockpit and get set up for a rocket's run in the first instance. Uh, as you can see here, I've got the the bigger pods on the inners and the uh, smaller pods on the outers. That's the F1s on the inner with 32 rockets and the F4 on the outers with 18 rockets each. We're going to go ahead and uncover master arm and move it into the middle position. Weapons are now armed. We're going to take a little look at the armament control panel and uh, the most important thing we have to do here is select this push button, uh, Can S Rock, which is air to ground guns or rockets. Once I illuminate this with Master Arm on, both the rocket trigger and the gun triggers will be live, although both of them need to be folded out in order to actually operate. Then we can actually choose whether we want to fire the inner pylons or the outer. I'm going to start with the inners, which is the, the F1 pods here, and we also have the option of CPC or Salvo. I'm going to leave it in CPC just now, and I've got the default setting for that which can only be set by the ground crew, which is six rockets per pull of the trigger. Last thing we're going to want to do is unfold the rocket safety. The rockets are now uh, hot and ready to launch. Uh, the profile, now the, the profiles are listed in the manual and they operate in just the same way as the ones for the bombs. I'm going to do a 450 knot, 10 degrees pitch down delivery, and I'm going to launch at 2000 feet. And for that, I need to set my sight to 55 milliradians. So let's do that. There. And you can see that puts the pipper quite high. So just be aware that um, the pipper settings for rockets are much, much higher than you're going to have for the bombs. So with that done, let's come out of active pause. Let's accelerate and let's climb towards the target. Uh, much like with the bombs, because we're doing a diving delivery we're going to want to uh, have a bit of altitude to play with at first. I'm usually aiming for something like 6,000 feet. And again, make sure that you're aware that your trigger is live at this stage, so be careful. No accidental releases. I'm going to come off to the side a little bit and bring my nose down, and I'm going to manage my speed now so that I can maintain the target in view, just on the side of the canopy rail. My targets are over here. I'm now going to roll in. Let's see if I can get this somewhat on profile. Uh, as is often the case, I'm not doing an amazing job, but there we go, something like that. And about now, and we're gonna launch again, launch again, and we're gonna want to immediately pull out and let's see if we had any kind of effect on target there. There's definitely some dust. Nope, I missed all the targets, they're all still intact. Okay, but uh, the employment is correct. Uh, that's exactly how it's done. Uh, and I think, actually, I think the rockets hit where I was aiming. Uh, I simply didn't have a very good view of the target, that's all. Let's come around one more time just for fun and fire off some more rockets. We're very, very low in this instance, but let's see if we make it work. Okay, altitude is out of parameters. Pitch is about right. Let's see if we can hit that. 
Oof, that looked like a much better hit. And uh, that's the inner inner pylons out at this stage. And yep, one vehicle destroyed. Uh, and the others are scattering. Excellent. Okay, that seems to have worked. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and refold the uh, rocket's safety, just like that. And now the next thing we're going to want to make use of, and this is the first time we're doing so, is I'm going to go into Adjust Controls, and we want to find the, the gun trigger. You'll notice that the gun firing safety can be folded in and out. Uh, until you fold it out, it will not be possible to fire the, the cannon. So default is left control, left windows and space. Let's give that a go. And you can't really see anything, but now if I pull the trigger, absolutely nothing happened. That's interesting. Let's try that again. Left control, left windows, space. Does it have to go in rather than out? Left shift, left windows and space. Let's try that. Done. Nope, neither is working. Interesting. Why would that be the case? Do I first have to unfold that? And then do this. Yes, indeed. Okay, right. So it's all part of the same mechanism. I'd actually forgotten that that was the case. So you first have to unfold the rocket's safety, and you can then, at that stage, uh, push the trigger, uh, the gun trigger, into position. So you actually want the uh, rocket safety unfolded, and then you want the gun trigger safety out, and then it will fire. I'm going to leave the, the pipper at 55 milliradians because we actually don't have uh, a table for the gun. The gun has tracers though, and so what you'll most likely do is kind of walk the rounds on target in air to ground mode. Uh, there probably are some tables out there in the real world, but there aren't any in the manual, so uh, I'm going to try and eyeball this. I'd imagine though that they're fairly close uh, in ballistic characteristics to what the rockets do. At least based on the tracers when I fired the gun before, that's kind of what it looks like. So let's make our way on down to the target. Let's see if we can score some hits this time. And uh, with scoring hits in mind, let's zoom right down on the sight glass. Where are those targets? Some of them did scatter. All right, let's squeeze off some rounds here and see where they're going. So that's Pipper on the fire. And that's quite, quite short. Okay. So we actually need to aim a bit higher. Yeah, yeah, it looks like actually we need quite a bit more uh, depression on that in order to get hits with the gun. Looks like it's something more like a hundred. Let's see. Let's see what we get. Or 90. Let's set 90. I'm going to go one more pass uh, and then we'll call that a good demonstration. Not the easiest thing to get hits with, uh, the, the air-to-ground cannon. Although the, the rockets are actually quite easy to employ, I found. There's the smoking one. Oh! Immediately passed out. Let's uh, get ourselves out of that dive. And now I've completely... Oh no, there we go. There's some guys. I missed them, but I got close. <laughs> That was almost fatal. Okay, so don't do that. Don't just suddenly push the stick forwards. You're going to want to roll and then pull back because uh, your your chappy is, is clearly not got a very good G-suit. In any case, that's the entire implementation of rockets and guns in air-to-ground mode. You're going to want your master arm to the middle position for armed. You're going to want to have the cannons and rockets push-button pushed. You can have single or salvo. You can choose inner or outer, and then you're going to want to unfold the trigger, uh, and then make sure that you have the cannon portion of the trigger out. Okay, I hope you all enjoyed that. I'll see you all next time.